Today's lesson is Information Fundamentals. We will be discussing the information portion of a GIS. In this lecture, we will be looking at the information you can view about your data and how to edit and manipulate this information. The I in GIS stands for information. It is the information that is associated with spatial features, which is really the heart of a GIS. Without the underlying information, a GIS would just be a cool program that makes pretty maps. To unlock the true power of a GIS, you must have a solid understanding of how to work with information in ArcGIS. Information in ArcGIS is stored in attribute tables. Each layer has its own attribute table, which stores all of the information in relation to each of its corresponding points, lines, or polygons on the map. All data tables, whether they are attribute tables in ArcMap or worksheets in Excel, consist of a series of rows and columns. With ArcMap, information can be kept in tables so that you can view it easily. Each column represents a different data category, such as name, date, or address, and is assigned a data type to best format the data within. For example, if you are recording the date of several records, you would create a new column and assign the data type as date, so that when the date was entered, it would automatically take on the formatting of a date. All rows have each of the columns in common. For example, if each row was replaced by tree 1, tree 2, and tree 3, and we were collecting data on these trees, the columns would be labeled and would identify features that they all have in common, such as height, circumference, and age. A series of relational functions and operators is available to operate on the tables and their data elements. You have the ability to perform a wide variety of functions on the data, such as finding the sum of a column or combining the data from several columns into a new column. You also have the ability to compare and contrast the data in several tables. The way data is set up in these tables lends itself to queries or questions. When these queries are performed or questions are asked of the data, a select group of data matching the criteria of the question will be returned. Within ArcGIS, you will query the data using a tool such as Select by Attribute or Select by Location, which permit the user to ask very complicated and detailed questions about the data. Every attribute table will contain a field that provides a unique ID to link the attribute table to each individual spatial feature. Unique IDs are created automatically by ArcGIS, however you may also create your own unique ID field within an Excel worksheet for instance, so that you can link to external data. You may need to reference a record that appears in multiple tables. The easiest way to do this is to ensure that the record has a unique ID number and that it remains the same in each table. Every attribute table will also contain a shape field which specifies whether the corresponding spatial feature is a point, line, or polygon. Both the unique ID field and shape field are automatically populated in the attribute table in ArcGIS. You cannot delete the object ID or shape field. You can add new fields within an attribute table. The dialog box shown is what appears after you select Add Field under Table Options in the attribute table. This is where you name the new data field and assign the data type to the column you are creating. Having a database dictionary that lists out the attribute fields and field types is very helpful when filling out this dialog box. There are eight field types to choose from when creating a new field. Four of these field types are just for numeric values and include short integer, long integer, float, and double. A short integer is assigned to a new field that will contain whole numbers between the number negative 32,768 and 32,767. A long integer is assigned to a new field that will contain whole numbers between this number set. A float is assigned to a new field that will contain numbers with decimals that do not require more than six places past the decimal. A double is assigned to a new field that will contain numbers with decimals that require high precision. An example of this would be for creating a field containing xy coordinates. Text is assigned to a new field that will contain alphanumeric characters 
or numbers that act as codes and will not be needed for arithmetic functions. Date fields are assigned to a new field that will contain dates, times, or dates and times. BLOB stands for Binary Large Object and is used to store data in a geo database as a long sequence of binary numbers. This field type is used for annotations or dimensions and images, multimedia or bits of code. This option is rarely ever used. Global Identifier is assigned to new fields where the feature class will be uploaded to an ArcGIS server application. This field is also rarely ever used. There are two ways to access attribute information in ArcGIS. The first is the attribute table. The second is the identify tool. First, we will discuss the attribute table. To open the attribute table, simply right click on the layer you want to look at and select open attribute table as shown here in the image. This is what the actual attribute table looks like in ArcMap. The first drop down menu at the top of the attribute table is the options menu. Under the options menu, you perform functions to the attribute table, such as adding a new field or creating reports. Along the top of the attribute table, you will find the field headers that you entered in while creating the attribute table or new field. At the bottom left hand corner of the table, you will see the number of records within the table. If there were records selected, it would also tell you out of the total number of records how many were selected. If you right click on any field header, this dialog box will appear. This allows you to sort the records in ascending or descending order to summarize the data, to use the field calculator on that column, to calculate geometry, and perform other basic functions, all of which will be explained at a later time. If you click on the options tab, this menu will appear. This allows you to select by attribute, add new fields, export data, and perform other basic functions. The record number controls how you move throughout the attribute table based on the object ID. The show function allows you to view all selected records together only. If you right click in the small gray box to the far left of an individual record, this record menu will appear. This allows you to select, zoom to, flash, and perform other basic functions. If you right click on an individual cell, this menu will appear and gives you basic functions such as copying and pasting a cell record. The identify tool is another way to view the attributes of a feature. The Identify tool is useful if you want to select a feature on the map and view only that single feature's attributes. It is also useful for controlling dynamic hyperlinks, viewing hyperlinks, and gaining access to related tables. Once you select a feature on the map with the Identify tool, this menu will automatically appear. You have the option to pick which layers you wish to identify by using the Identify From drop-down menu at the top. Once you select a layer and then click on a specific feature, you will see this dialog box appear that shows you all of the attributes for that feature. If you right-click on an individual cell, this menu box will appear which gives you options for selecting fields. If you right click on the feature name in the top portion of the identified dialog box, you will see this menu appear. This menu gives you specific options for navigating to that specific feature or layer properties. The lab assignment for this lesson will have you explore many, but not all, of the various functions available within the numerous menu options accessible in the attribute table and the identified dialog box. In addition to opening the attribute table or using the identify button to view information about your features, you also have the ability to edit or modify any data in any field within your attribute table. To edit data fields, you'll need to open the edit toolbar and select start editing. Make sure your target is set to the feature you wish to edit. 
One easy way to know whether or not you are in edit mode is to look next to the show function at the bottom of the attribute table. If there is a pencil next to the record shown text, then you are in edit mode. One key note is that if you wish to add a new field, you must not be in the edit mode. Simply click the table options drop down and then select add field. Once you select add field, the add field dialog box will appear. First, you will have to assign a new name to your field. You cannot use any spaces in your field name. Some field names are reserved and cannot be used. If you try to name a field a reserved name, you will get this message stating that your field name is invalid. The hyperlink will give you an idea of what the reserved field names might be. Next, you select your field type. If you are unsure of what field type to use, refer back to slide 8 to review what each of the field types mean. You can assign an alias for your new field. The alias is what will appear as the field header title for your new field. You also have to decide if you will permit null values. Null is the value used to represent an unknown piece of data. If you do not allow null values, you have to put a value in for every field. You may also specify a default value to be used to populate a field whenever a new feature is created. For example, if you are digitizing an apple orchard, you may wish to make the default tree type apple. If an orange tree slipped into your orchard, then you would have to manually change the value to orange. If you have an attribute domain established, you could also select the domain here. Attribute domains are rules that describe the legal values of a field type, providing a method for enforcing data integrity. They are used to constrain the values allowed in any particular attribute for a table or feature class. This is covered in more detail in the GIS2 course. If you are creating a text field, you may also specify the length of the text field from 1 to 255 width. This width corresponds to the number of maximum characters allowed in this field. You do not specify length for numeric fields because the numeric type you select determines the length or size of the field already. The field calculator is an extremely powerful tool that can be used to modify and create new information within your attribute table. The field calculator is an extremely powerful tool that can be used to modify and create new information within your attribute table. The field calculator dialog box can be opened by right clicking on a field name in the attribute table and selecting field calculator. This is what it looks like when it opens. The field calculator has many functions including calculating a numeric value based on multiple fields or concatenating two or more text fields. Concatenation is the process of putting together two text strings. For example, if you had a field called township and a field called municipality type in your data set, you could join these two fields into a new field by using concatenation. The formula shown on this slide gives an example of how you would put two text strings together to form Dover Township. Now you will go ahead and move on to the lab exercise where you will have a chance to start working with and learning more about information.